In this video, I'm going to show you how two of my clients this year were able to get off of their reflux medications completely. I'll break down what they tried before coming to me that didn't work, what specialty labs we used to determine what foods they're reacting to and should avoid, and also what else was going on within their gut. I'll also show you what supplements and protocols we used as they were tapering off of their medication. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video that explains the causes of reflux and the long-term dangers of taking antacids, I suggest you watch that as well. And just a quick reminder, this is for educational purposes only. You should always check with your medical doctor before making any medical decision. The first case we will review is a 36-year-old male who had been on reflux medication for 17 years. And even on the medication, he would complain about getting recurrent heartburn, nausea, and a sour stomach. He would avoid the common trigger foods like spicy foods and alcohol, but that didn't really seem to help him very much. And his two most well-known triggers were stress and heavy lifting. So the first thing that we did with this person was run an advanced nutritional panel, stool panel, and a comprehensive food sensitivity panel. And as we covered in the previous video, one of the main nutritional deficiencies that we see with people who are on antacids are B vitamin deficiencies, and that's what we see here. We see a folate deficiency and also a significant B6 deficiency. His food sensitivity testing showed that he was reacting significantly to cottonseed oil, which is in a lot of processed foods that you don't even realize. A lot of vegetable oils have cottonseed oil in it, and also dairy, which is obviously a more significant one that's harder to cut out. And his comprehensive stool panel showed significant amount of inflammation, dysbiosis, and also some metabolic imbalance, especially looking at beta glucuronidase. But the good news was that his digestion was fantastic and having digestive issues, and he did not have any signs of infection present. So given all that background information, what do we do? Well, the first thing that I always tackle with all of my clients is addressing environmental inputs. And when I say environmental inputs, I mean things like air, your water, light, sleep, stress, and things like that. We made sure that he got a high quality water filter and we focused on adding the right balance of minerals into his drinking water and made sure he was drinking an adequate amount every day. We emphasize specific breathing exercises, including control pause exercises, and also some heart rate variability training to put his body into a more parasympathetic state. That is the state that your body releases digestive enzymes, stomach acid, it increases your bowel motility, so helping your food move throughout the gastrointestinal tract, which is essential, and it helps tighten that lower esophageal sphincter that we talked about in the previous episode. We optimize his light exposure, which is extremely important for triggering your circadian or daily rhythm, which your stomach is tied to. We made sure that he got adequate sun in the morning and throughout the day, and we were making sure that he was blocking any blue light exposure at nighttime. For his nutrition, the first thing we did was eliminate any foods that that had cottonseed oil in it or dairy with the exception of ghee, which is often well tolerated in people who react to dairy. And he was able to use other types of dairy products. So for instance, he could use anything that was sheep or goat dairy, just nothing from cows. Our focus for diet wasn't super restrictive. The goal was to eat a varied and diverse diet of whole foods and to eliminate anything that was processed. We kept coffee to about one cup per day and alcohol we wanted to keep minimal. So as few drinks as possible. And if he was getting any symptoms, then we wanted to cut back even more. And after implementing these changes alone, his reflux symptoms improved dramatically. And that's when we began the tapering off of the omeprazole. And the way we did this was we would alternate between taking omeprazole and Pepsid AC, which is a less strong antacid. And once he was able to wean off the omeprazole, then he was just taking the Pepsid AC and then we began weaning him off of that slowly. And the weaning was solely just based on symptoms. The more symptoms he had, the slower he went. If he felt good, he can taper quicker. He did get some breakthrough reflux sometimes, which is expected, but it was well controlled with baking soda and water and also using chewing gum helped a lot with him. We also had him use a device called the iCoro device. And the way this works is it's a simple device that you put in your mouth and it helps strengthen the muscles from your mouth to your throat all the way even your esophagus and this helps prevent reflux and then finally after he weaned off of those antacids we used an herbal protocol to address the dysbiosis in his gut then we retested his gut and this is the before and after shot of what happened as you can see this was the before testing before he got off of the antacids and we addressed his gut and environmental inputs and nutrition and then this is the after so as you can see we are seeing significant improvements in inflammation dysbiosis and metabolic imbalance and again we're not seeing any signs of infection and no signs of mouth digestion. So this was an absolute home run outcome. 
And just to tie it all up, after our six months of working together, he was completely off of his reflux medications and he was seldomly having some mild breakthrough reflux that was well controlled with chewing gum. And one thing that he noticed over time was that stress really was a big contributor to his reflux symptoms. So he really made a point to work on his stress and one way that he did it was through meditation. Now I'm not saying that everybody has to meditate to get off of their reflux medications, but one thing that I do commonly see is that stress is often a large trigger and contributor to reflux symptoms. So that's case Case number one and let's move on to case number two now this was a much more complicated case now this person she was 43 years old when she came to me and had an extensive history of taking antibiotics as a child for recurrent sinus infections and she never really had great digestion even as an adult she was a business owner and several years prior to us working together she was suffering from significant burnout that she improved significantly by cutting out coffee improving her sleep and taking some specific supplements and then about a year before we connected she had a tooth removed and was put on a course of antibiotics soon after that she developed a viral infection and that's when her gut symptoms really started. In fact, she developed reflux so bad that she couldn't tolerate eating any food. And this person was thin. She weighed around 100 pounds, so she didn't really have a lot of weight to lose. And she lost 10 pounds over the course of a few months. She went to several doctors and specialists and wasn't really able to get much relief. The one thing that did help was she was put on omeprazole to help with the reflux symptoms, even though she didn't want to go on it. And I agree this was the right call. You see, I'm not anti-medication. Sometimes they're absolutely necessary. And in this case, they absolutely were. The problem is when you get put on medications like this and you stay on it for an extended period of time and don't address the root cause of the issue. This was the perfect scenario where an antacid was warranted and now we need to spend time to understand why she has the reflux and to fix the imbalances causing it. So once this person started Meprazole, she was able to tolerate food much better. It still wasn't perfect, but she was able to eat and put some weight back on. Unfortunately, soon after starting Omeprazole, she developed adult acne, which she never had in her life. And as you can imagine, a 43-year-old woman developing acne is a huge issue. So our goals when working together were to get her to eat more food because she was only able to tolerate about five foods. Any other ones would give her a really bad reflux still, even on the Omeprazole. We also wanted to get her off of the reflux medication and then finally to also help her get rid of the adult acne. And we started off with the same labs that we did in the previous case. We did an advanced nutritional panel a comprehensive stool panel, and an advanced food sensitivity panel. When she came to me, she was taking about 10 supplements from other providers and we cut those out almost completely because in my experience, less is more when it comes to gut issues. The more things you are taking, the more likely you are to have symptoms, even if you are taking the best quality gut supplements. And because she was only able to tolerate five different food items, the goal here was to introduce one food at a time and see if she tolerated or not. If not, we would cut it back out and reintroduce something else, but we wanted to slowly build and expand that repertoire because when you're only eating a few foods over time, you create nutritional deficiencies by omission. For her, we emphasized heavily cooked foods like soups and stews with tender meats and root vegetables, things that are really easy to digest and easy on the stomach. The thing that we don't want to do is stress the stomach, especially with very tough cuts of meat, which are hard to digest, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. You want things to be really cooked down, easily broken down, and easily digested by the body. When we looked at her food sensitivity test, we noticed that she was reacting strongly to peanuts, grapeseed oil, egg whites and carrots. So these were big things that we had to cut out. We also saw significant oxidative stress, which we think was coming from the gut. When you see this marker, you can't really tell where it's coming from, but oftentimes it's usually gut related. She had a glutathione deficiency, which is the main detoxifier in the body. And when you have elevated levels of oxidative damage, you will often see lower glutathione because it is trying to compensate for that. And then finally, we saw some significant copper deficiencies and also a low potassium. The good news is that as soon as this person started supplementing with vitamin B6, her acne resolved completely, and this was a huge, huge relief. And on this person's stool panel, we saw some significant dysbiosis that was present, which is an imbalance between good and bad bacteria. And then we also saw some pathogens within her stool as well that need to be addressed, but you never want to address pathogens within the stool while somebody is on antacid if possible. The goal is to get yourself off of the antacid it's first because that helps maintain balance and regularity within your gut and then you can start addressing anything like dysbiosis or pathogens. We also worked on the same environmental and lifestyle changes as we did in the previous case and I even enlisted the help of an executive mindset coach to help this person with their stress and past trauma. And this is really unusual but when it came time to wean off of the omeprazole this person was super hesitant and decided to remove one bead from the capsule at a time and there was something like 150 beads in each capsule. 
So again, this isn't typical, but it's what this person was comfortable with. So that's what we went with. And then for any breakthrough reflux, this person did find relief with some baking soda and water. And then also she would sometimes get some bloating, which gas X seemed to help a lot. She also preferred more natural means. So smooth move tea was also something that she did fairly regularly. And as she was tapering off the antacids, she did have some constipation that we were working on as well. And we did use the magnesium citrate and magnesium sulfate to help with that. Now, I don't want to bore you with every detail of this case because it was complex and it did take some time, but we were able to eventually get her off of her antacids completely and eating a much larger variety of foods. And even better, she was finally able to go out to a restaurant and eat food there, which she hadn't been able to do for a year because every time she would try, she would get significant reflux. Just imagine how hard that is to not be able to go out to a restaurant and enjoy a simple meal with your family and how amazing it must be to finally be able to do that. It sounds simple, but it was such a huge win. And to date, this client is still working on some mild constipation, but her reflux is pretty much gone. Her skin is clear and she is back to a healthy way and her energy is fantastic. So as you can see, you can have two people with the same symptoms, but the road to recovery and to healing can be quite different. It takes a personalized approach that properly assesses and addresses what's going on within your body, your environment, your lifestyle, and your mindset. You then need to fix the imbalances that you discover within the right order of operations in order to get consistent and sustainable results. I call this the PQS method. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this video. And just a reminder, this video is for educational purposes only and should always check with your doctor before making any medical decisions.